Right, okay, the first thing you need to do, you need to load up your project, uh, and you need to make sure that you've put your XML comments in these things. Okay, and you need to make sure you put the parameters in. And you put the parameters in just between the two tags. Okay, so you must make sure you've covered all of those, all your subroutines, and also all your variables as well. All right, so we've already talked about this, so you should have been in the process of doing this. But this will highlight the ones that you've missed, quite obviously. Okay, right, so the, what we need to do is to make sure that they get outputted, and by default, they're not outputted. So we're going to go to Project, go to the last item, which is the properties of your project, and click on the Build tab. Scroll down, you'll see this thing that says XML document file. You need to tick that. That will allow Sandcastle to then pull all the XML comments. All right. While you're here, another thing you might want to do, if you go into Application, all right, you can change the output name by setting the assembly name. Okay, so instead of it saying template, or whatever it was called, you can change that to whatever you want your executable file to be called. The other thing you might want to do on the assembly information, you might want to put some stuff like your name and stuff in there. That comes up when you go on to properties of a executable file, and it'll tell you who the author is. So you can put all those details in if you want anyway, and make up some what version it is, <laughs> like I do. <laughs> right, okay, so once you've done that, what you must do is build your project so that the XML file is created. And we'll get the evidence of that in a minute. Right, so assuming you've done that, leave Visual Studio open. But you then want to load up Sandcastle. And the one you want is the GUI. Okay. And it'll come up like this. Now, Sandcastle, great program. Let's just close that project so we start blank. Great program, but it's got one fatal fault. When you tell it where you want it to create all your documentation, it obliterates whatever's in that folder. If you say H drive, it will destroy your entire H drive. All right, so you've got to be dead careful. Look at Billy Ann, I can see you worried. That's why I'm doing a video. No, it just does it. So it doesn't get conflicts with file names. So it just uh, bins everything in there. So when we build this, we're going to get it to build the documentation to the D drive in a folder you create. All right, just in case. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is just create a new project. So we say, start project. This file's okay. You can save this in your H drive. But we need to save this so we don't have to keep putting the settings in. So um, game of life docs. That's what I'm going to call it. Okay. Right, we're just going to go through these uh, properties one by one. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our documentation. What do we want as our source? So we've got to point to where our game is. So we're going to right click on document sources and say add document source. We've then got to navigate. Okay, uh, I have no idea where my game of life is. If you don't know where your program is stored, if you go on Solution Explorer, pick one of your files and go properties, You'll get the file name. So that's on my H drive. Right, so back to Sandcastle. So H drive. Uh, 452, game of life. Right, what you've got to do is you've got to find the executable file. So you need to go into your folder. Don't go in the content one. Go into the normal one. Go into bin. x86. Into debug. And you should. That's what I call my assembly game of life. Yours will say template unless you've changed it in that build window. Okay. Don't select both of them. You can see that the XML file's there, but just select the executable and select open. If it's worked properly, it will automatically load that XML file. If that hasn't come up, then there might be an issue. Okay. But it, it should work if you've told it to. Right. Once we've done that, we can come back over to the project properties and we don't want the HTML help we want the website help there's something wrong with those tick boxes they don't seem to work first time i don't know why 
But we just need that one setting. Okay, don't need to change anything else on that screen. If you go on to the next one, this allows you to put a load of... It's going to build a, a, an entire website for us. And all the pages are going to have some standard information on. So the title, you might want to change that. Change what that is. Change the language. I don't know whether you can put UK. Nah. So it's got to be an American. Okay. Um, there are copyright things that you can put on. You can put email links for feedback. So you can make a load of stuff up if you want on that one. At the bottom, we need to untick everything except C Sharp. Because what it's going to do is going to give you sample code of using your code in different languages. It's quite clever. All right. So we just want C Sharp on that one. Next one down. We don't need to do anything on that one or that one. Or that one. If we go to the summaries, don't need to do that. Visibility is where we need to be careful. Okay. So, we shouldn't be showing inherited classes. All right. If we do that, we'll get all the .NET framework stuff, and we don't want that. But we probably have got private subroutines and private variables. So, we're just going to make sure that the bottom four are selected on this. You might. Where we've been like saying generate value or generate code, it might have notified some as being internal. So you might have to, if you notice something missing, just check the internal one. Okay. It shouldn't be, but there might be the odd one. So those bottom four just need ticking. So we include just those. You probably don't need that last one either. Okay. But it won't hurt. Right. The next one, missing tags. It can tell us where we haven't put comments in okay so we don't need type param but all of the other ones except namespace don't worry about that one all the other ones are required so we've got constructors we haven't got any disposed methods but summary param and returns they're the key ones that we want okay and it will pull all that into the web pages that it's going to create now the one that you have not got to cock up the paths so it's got output path we're going to change that. It actually does. If you move over that little warning thing, we will delete everything without warning you. They didn't used to have any message. We found this out when someone decided to store it in their same folder as their project <laughs> and lost their entire project. Which was okay because we could have got it off the backup, but the backup hadn't been working for two months and no one noticed. Uh, luckily, the person had printed out their code and managed to type it all in again in the last two weeks. So that was a saver. Right, so this, we're going to go to the D drive. We're going to create a folder. So I'm going to call it Game of Life Docs. And I'm going to select that folder. And I'm then going to double check that it says D drive and another folder. I am not just going to like while delete it. Okay, so that's the path ones. All the other ones, I don't think we need to set anything, any of those. Okay, right, that should be it. All I've now got to do is go up to this little build icon and say build. And it'll start chugging away. It's not too bad, actually, because we've got SSDs. Um, it's quite fast. So what it's doing, it's scanning that XML file and it's building a series of links. And then it's going to turn all that into web pages that are all hyperlinked for you. Quite clever. But it's only as good as the rubbish that you've put in. And that's it. It's finished. Right. To view it, I need to go to where I said create the help file. So that was on my D drive. Uh, Game of Life Docs. And you'll see that you've got this. So this is a website with a load of other stuff. We just need the index.html. This doesn't work very well in Chrome. We've got some weird settings. You'll have to allow ActiveX because we block that by default. And what you'll get is in this little um, table of contents on the left, you'll get all the classes of your game. Now, you've got more than this. But if you open up and expand each one of these, the main sheet that we need to see is the members. Okay. So this has got in it all... And you can see that I've got a lot of blanks. <laughs> this has got all the variables and all the methods that I've got in my game objects. Okay. 
Anywhere where there's a blank, I haven't filled it in. So I haven't put my summary tag in. All right, so I need to go back to look at those. Now I'll show you how to quickly find those in a minute. Now I've got I've got some things in here that I probably don't want, but for my uh, purposes, I've actually used some of these. So when we click onto one of them, it will give us this information. So the ver the methods, the subroutines, you'll get this little bit of syntax telling you how to use it, and you'll get any parameters that you've provided. Okay. So if I go on to this one, I've got, for some reason, there's an ant on my desk. I'm just going to get it. Where's that come from? Stupid thing. <laughs> ah, dear. Right, so uh, da, 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 da. let's have a look at something useful. So you can see when I click on rule one, it's got two parameters, column and row, but I never put the information in. So it's got these little red warnings. We don't want those. So what I need you to do when you get find out things that you haven't got. Okay, so it's like, oh, no, I've not got those. Go back to your program and load up class view. If that's not available, go view class view. This will let you look at your program object by object, which is exactly what you're looking at here on the documentation that's been produced. So I'm going to go to Conway Life and that will give me a list of all my variables and all my methods. So I can just double click and go straight to them. And I can see that, whoops, yeah, there's quite a few there that I haven't bothered putting XML comments on. Okay. Once you've done that, it's important that you rebuild. So if I say done now I can't now or something like that so if I rebuild my Visual Studio project then I can go back to Sandcastle and rebuild it make sure when you've done all these settings that you actually save the project again so the next time you load this up at another date you haven't got to change it all so I can rebuild it's now deleting everything in that folder which might make that a bit odd Let's close that. It should be quicker with the subsequent rebuilds because it hasn't got to do the whole thing again. And there you go. That was quicker this time. So if I find uh, index.html, yes. That won't happen if you do it at home. That's just specifically our thing. There you go. So old state is now done now. So when you do your printouts, what you'll find... Again, I think it's because of our system. Uh, it only prints one page. So if we go print preview, it's chopped it to bits. Nothing we can do about that. So what you might find better to do, and you can see all the stuff at the top that we can keep, we might want to copy and paste to Word. It makes it really massive in Word. I don't know why. So when I paste it, yeah, it's massive as well because I've got it on 280%. But let's go back to page size. You can see it's massive. But thanks to my friend Kieran, I now know how to shrink all the font if I click the right thing. That one. <laughs> okay, so you can just shrink all of them relative to each other. And that's what we need to print off. So I, I need you, when you've done this, to print that. So for each one of your objects, you're going to print the member list. So you get all your variables and all your subroutines. What I then want you to do, any that have got interesting parameters, your subroutines. Um, so where would I have a decent one for that? Probably on... That one. So my set one has got three parameters. Because I've filled the parameters in, I've got some nice descriptions of what they are. I want you to print four or five interesting subroutines. So some of them you've got have got lots of parameters. They'll be the interesting ones to do. 
Okay, so your technical documentation is automatically done. So it's a double whammy. You get marks for using comments. You get marks for doing self-documenting comments. And you get marks for producing this output. Okay, you don't have to do anything else with it. You're just going to print them out and put them after the code. Okay, anyone got any questions about that? Now, the key thing from my point of view, because I can't do anything about it if it all goes horribly wrong, is the paths thing. <laughs> okay, balls everything else up, I don't mind, but don't pick your H drive or your USB stick that's got your project on it. Whatever you do, or you are doomed. Right, I'll stop blathering on.